need to be processed in a way that is as humane as possible to be done properly, it has to reach welfare standards, and that's where the problem is. Uh, the government have told us that they are listening, that they understand the challenges of the pig industry, and they're keeping it under close review. But here they're saying, yes, they agree, it would be great if they could fill all the roles with UK workers, but it doesn't solve the problem now, and the problem for farmers like this is desperate. Nina, thanks very much indeed. We'll talk to you again soon. It is 23 minutes past six. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News and it's been a busy weekend for you, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, it's been enjoyable, though. Has, are you sure? Yes, I, Honestly, I, I loved it. We're going to... High pressure is in charge of our weather. It's... I'd call it Prince George's this word. Is all of our grandchildren, if we're lucky enough to have them, will inherit the earth that we bequeath them, won't they? I mean, how worried are you about the state of that inheritance? It was a big <laughs> performance against, in a tournament, certainly, which is one of the ranks, is one of the biggest outside of the Grand Slams. Al Kraus is a player who's reached the quarterfinal. It's not a bad selection of trees, that is it. Yeah. And we will uh, we'll have a bit more of that later in the programme for you. <laughs> what we have now is John Watson. Morning, John. Good morning. The latest from Andy Murray. I know. It sort of feels like we're sort of pouring over his performances, aren't we? But I think when but he kind we are. of. We are. But I think, you know, when he does something which you feel against, a, you know, a win against a player who's kind of one of the big rising stars of tennis, I guess it kind of sort of stands out that. The quality is still there. Found his wedding ring, of course, which is a bit of a boost. Where's the recovery going? No, it's it's much better now. Um, my recovery is, I won't say coming to an end, because I obviously have to continue, continue doing it. Um, Carol, thanks very much. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Uh, a little bit later on in the programme, we're going to be speaking to the music producer and model railway enthusiast, Pete Waterman, about his collection, aren't we? Can't wait for this. We yeah. can take a little look now, though. John is there for us this morning. John, just how excited are you? <laughs> I probably shouldn't disclose, Sally, just how excited I am. One of the great things about working on this programme that we love is you end up in all sorts of weird and wonderful places, and this definitely is in the wonderful camp. As you say, Pete Waterman's train set. Here we go, look at this coming through now. That is, I'm reliably informed by Pete, a King-class steam engine ran on British rail railways between the mid-30s up until 1964. The detail is just absolutely extraordinary. This is Leamington Spa Station, Pete Waterman's hometown. Uh, again, information from him, one of only two Art Deco railway stations built in the UK. The other one was Cardiff. And this is just extraordinary to see. Uh, he prefers the 50s and the 60s, and the noise that you can hear is this diesel engine that's coming through, uh, towing a little, little horn there as it comes through the town, uh, reconstructed from photographs, uh, from programmes such as Britain from the air. Just watching this diesel coming through underneath the canopy at Leamington Class Station. Gives me a little toot. Hello, wave to the driver. Uh, he's also got a project building another railway, slightly smaller than this, for Chester Cathedral. So Pete can run us through all of that later on. Uh, it's quite surreal, really. This is a bit like being Gulliver, isn't it? We'll tell you all about it. We'll meet Pete. We'll find out why he's so enthusiastic about railways and his plans for Chester Cathedral later on in the programme. Back to you. John, that is just fantastic. I cannot wait to talk to you <laughs> at length about that. I think John's having the time of his life. I, I what do you think? I remember talking to Rod Stewart on this programme. about. It. He's, he's another one who's got a huge um, model train set. I mean, that, that is dedication to the but cause, isn't it? You've also got to have some spare time, haven't yeah, you, as but well? That's, if, you, if you love trains, that's, that's the road you go down. And now the, the Labour track, Party, maybe. yes, the track you go down, yeah, that's better, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, the Labour Party say the government needs to get a grip on the handling of the energy crisis. Good morning to you. So, how's it going down? How's it working? Well, there has been a bit of backlash from some of the nightclub industries within the city centre across South Wales, seeing some of them saying that they feel as though they've kind of been... Uh, it's hard done by again, really, after what's been a difficult year for them. Although others are saying at least it doesn't mean at the moment that they're going to close, so they'll take anything they can to remain open. I'm mean, here in the train station this morning. The rush hour is starting to come through, and I suppose the big test will be... I'm impressed you even tried it. Yes, well, well done. I, I said it slowly oh. like Carol did yeah. to make sure it came out right. Thanks, Carol. See you later Thanks. on. Thanks. Here's a question for you. you ready? Oh, go on then. Yeah, I'm what prepared. What do Rod Stewart, Elton John, Phil Collins, 
and Bruce Springsteen all have in common. Whatever it is you're thinking, I bet it isn't <laughs> model railways. Mm. All around the UK, there are dedicated enthusiasts that spend hundreds of hours building perfect replicas of towns, villages and tracks. Now, John is in Cheshire for us this morning alongside a remarkable collection built by someone you might know. John, what have you got for us? Morning. Morning, Sally. Morning, Dan. Isn't it absolutely extraordinary? Just look at this coming through now. It's a King Class loco, obviously steam, steam uh, powered back in the day, ran on British Railways between, I think, 1937 and 1964. This is all built by record producer Pete Waterman and some of his colleagues and friends. A real labour of love, this, based on Pete's hometown of Leamington Spa and we're just walking you up to the station now. I've never seen anything like this before in my life to be honest. The detail is extraordinary but it's also huge in a small way. Uh, not only of course the trains, the carriages but the buildings too and as Pete was telling me earlier this Leamington Spa station, one of only two Art Deco stations built in the UK the other one being Cardiff. Pete, good morning. Morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Great yeah. to see you. Um, you've been doing this for how long? Well, since <laughs> 1948, I've had a train set. My first electric one was in 52. And we've been building this for 20 years. And uh, last year we decided to build a layout for Chester Cathedral, which was amazing. We had to build it in six months. So this took us 20 years, Cathedral took us six months, but we did have a hand of God helping us. Yeah. <laughs> it's always useful to have that yeah, in, your, in your corner, isn't it? And, and the TV programme starts tonight, uh, and you're in, I think, November the 1st, yeah. which features what you did in Chester Cathedral. Tell us about that. Tell us what, well, what's, what's the idea behind that. Chester is famous for Thomas Bressy, and Thomas Bressy is an engineer that built most of the railways. I think he built 20 miles uh, of, of railway throughout the world, 20... So sort of every hundred, he built 20 miles throughout the world. Very famous railway builder. Uh, nobody knows who he is, but he's a Chesterman. So his uh, chapel is in the Chester Cathedral. So the dean wanted a sort of tribute to him because mm -hmm. it was uh, 150 years since he died and also to show engineering uh, in its light today. And when will that go on display? Well, we're going back. We did, we, we did from July this year to September. And we're going back in 2020. Two to do right. again July all the way through to September, okay. which is um, a real task for the small, you know, for the small Hornby engines. I mean, some of our, our engines did 52 real miles, you know, which is a lot of work. You know, they they are amazing, and, and the crowd were just well, it staggered us all just how many people turned up and and the sort of people that turned up. It, it was superb. I mean, we must be the only model railway ever to have a wedding and two funerals and have prayers at every day at 11 o'clock. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. uh, because the, 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 the series, the documentary series, is about Hornby. Gets under the skin, I suppose, of why this gets under your skin. Yeah, I mean, people are passionate about things and model railways is definitely uh, a passion that a lot of people don't quite understand. But it's about history, it's about doing it yourself. Um, you can absorb yourself into it, you mm. know, so it, it does relieve a lot of mental stress. Um, and at the end of the day, it's playing trains. Yeah, but you also play with big ones as well, don't I you? I do, yeah. Big, big trains. Let's just have a quick look here. So this is, so, so I was wondering how you actually uh, make sure that everything is accurate and, and, and appropriate to the period. Tell me what we're looking at here. Well, this is a, a Luftwaffe picture, actually, of Leamington Spa during the Second World War, but there's a site called Britain from Above, yeah. And we used that site to, to model the whole lot. Because, of course, it was taken throughout the 20s, 30s and 40s and early 50s from the air when people did that. And, it, of course, it shows you where everything is and was uh, for us to model and put everything in its, its right place. And it really takes you back when you look around. You've got this, uh, one of the shops here, Freeman Hardy Willis. Yeah, I remember yeah. those. You always used to have a Freeman Hardy Willis shoe shop wherever you went, didn't you? So... Getting that detail right is important. Oh, it's crucial. Um, that's the fun. But the fun for me is doing this research, uh, looking at things like traffic lights. Yeah. You know, looking at, for instance, Leminster Spa is quite unique in the Midlands because if you come down here, you'll see that unlike any other houses in the Midlands, that the cottages, as they were called, you know, workmen's huts, 
I've got fire breaks. Right. Well, houses in the middle of the didn't have fire breaks. No, okay. And okay. the reason that Lemmings and Spa did, because they were built by London builders. Right. So the London, that. you know, people in London own the property. It's important to get that right. Pete, yeah. thank you so much. Pleasure. Uh, pleasure to spend some time with you this morning to show us around. Absolutely extraordinary, as we say, uh, documentary series starts tonight. Nine o'clock, I think it is. Uh, promises to be a real treat. Spectacular. It's beautiful, actually. Look at it. Absolutely isn't it? gorgeous. Very calming as well to watch. I think anything that, when that much work has gone into something to make it look that spectacular, that is a lot of effort. So it's lifetimes beautiful. love that, isn't it? It's beautiful. Um, it is fast approaching eight o'clock. We've spoken this morning about uh, UK steel, and one of the Gareth Stay. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, stay with us. We've got the headlines coming up very soon. On your marks, get set. Couch to five K to find out more.